Elizabeth's first assignment with Wycliffe was in the mountains of South Asia as a Bible storying facilitator, helping God's word into, uh, get into culturally relevant, biblically accurate stories for the Kahani people. Did I say that right, Kahani? She says it was a dream come true for her. After that project, Elizabeth served the Wycliffe USA recruitment team, speaking about Bible storying in numerous colleges and venues across the US uh, and even in Malaysia and New Zealand. Elizabeth then returned to South Asia to manage a cluster of six storying projects. From there, she served as a consultant with storying projects in languages in Asia and Africa. Altogether, Elizabeth assisted with storying work in 19 language projects. Man, you must get confused if you're talking some other language with all those. She then moved to Orlando, Florida and took an instructional design assignment with the orientation and training team working on online training for Wycliffe USA. In 2012, she joined the discovery team, which eventually became the volunteer and interim placement called VIP. Elizabeth served VIP as trip coordinator, team leader, and most recently, recently as associate director since March, 2020. Elizabeth is here today to share about her resignation after 17 years of service with Wycliffe. Welcome. Good morning. As I reflect back over the 17 years and all that God has done as I have served with Wycliffe, I cannot say that these have been my years alone. They have been your years. They have been our years. Every single word of scripture in the 19 language projects that you supported through prayer and finances are being heard by people who previously did not have those scripture portions in their language. And we will have the honor of meeting some of them in heaven one day. As I transition, at times, it might be easy to, for me to wonder if my God-given role of mothering our children could ever measure up to the years of service that God gave me as an overseas missionary among unreached people groups. This graphic was produced by InterVarsity for Urbana, a missions conference that I attended as a freshman in college and that deepened my calling into missions. And a fun fact, I was able to return to the conference two times when my brother and sister attended their freshman years in college um, with University of Delaware's InterVarsity team, which was led by Pastor Billy. And in case the writing is, is small, the dark blue bar shows the average annual income. And it starts with like missionary on the left and goes to the Houston Rockets point guard on the right. And the light blue bar, which is the same for all occupations, is potential for kingdom impact. The truth is, as believers, God has already determined our value and worth, and it is exponential. He knows he paid for it by sending his son to die for us. The work that he gives in this life, whether overseas or staying at home, is a gift. Regardless of what we do or where we live, all of us have a high potential for kingdom impact. When I left for South Asia in 2005, I was a single woman. I shared my desire to get married with a veteran missionary who was a wife and a mother, and she prayed with me for a husband, and she encouraged me by saying, you have a unique position that I never had as a wife and a mother. You are able to trek deeper in the villages, spend the night there, because as a single woman, you are not a threat, and there's no question of why are you not with your husband or your children. You can get an inside view on village culture 24-7, which will greatly aid your translation work as you seek to decipher the best words to communicate accurately. Now, as I look at my two daughters, little unreached people within my own home, I realize that God has given me yet another unique position of influence in their lives for a very brief time. I get to be the one to introduce them to Jesus. I get to work right on the front lines of their hearts, watching God reveal himself to them. 
Just like my years living among the Kahani people in South Asia, I will still be communicating Bible stories. It's just that now I have been exceptionally blessed to do it in a place with constant electricity and running water. A few months ago, I had a conversation with a financial partner. As we reflected on the, my years of service, he commented, your role is changing, but the faithfulness of God is staying the same. As I look back, I can clearly see the constant faithfulness of our God in the past, present, and future. Just as he gave me patience to press on when I absolutely couldn't understand the language of my Kahani neighbors, he will give me the patience to press on when I absolutely can't understand the language or behavior of my daughters. Just as he gave me perseverance to tackle key terms to make the Bible stories more understandable, he will give me perseverance to discipline in love, whether potty training, teaching my teen how to drive, or when my adult child does things I don't agree with. Just as he gave me grace to endure and smile at the chaos of the culture of South Asia, he will give me, a type A, highly sensitive introvert, grace to endure and perhaps even find delight in the never-ending sounds and messes of children, especially the extroverted ones. Just as he gave me wisdom as the associate director of the volunteer and intern department to navigate the complicated decisions of overseas travel at the height of the COVID pandemic, I know that the Lord will give my husband and me wisdom to walk through the continual challenges of parenting as we grow right along with our children. God's faithfulness has not changed. His mercies are still new every morning. His strength and love are deep and wide and available to me now as they always have been. Thank you, Cornerstone, for investing in me and trusting the Lord for the outcome of my service with Wycliffe Bible Translators. It has been an honor to serve on your behalf, and it's with joy that I surrender these years to the Lord with gratefulness. Thank you for your continued prayers for my husband and me as we raise our daughters. friends since college uh, the, I remember as a new Christian just being uh, really impressed with your your heart for the gospel and your heart for for others that took her all the way to India uh, right out of college and uh, we've had a deep investment in your in, in your work as a, as a church Elizabeth is here all the way from Florida uh, this morning to be able to uh, to give this report and to celebrate uh, this next stage and so on behalf of the missions committee I'd like to give you these flowers and just uh, say thank you, thank you. have a chance, please talk to Elizabeth uh, after the service. She's got wonderful, wonderful stories to tell of God's faithfulness. All right, Pastor Dave. Our call to worship this morning. Good morning, church. It's great to see you, and uh, you might not know this, but our very first connection to Cornerstone was Elizabeth. We met her before, long before we came to Cornerstone. Jeannie and I met her in India, so it's really fun to see you on this day, and uh, this is uh, great to praise the Lord together. Let's just take a moment, quiet our hearts, and ask the Lord to um, prepare us to worship him and to receive from him this morning. 